This was oddly something of a crisis. I say oddly because the analytical philosophers are often contrasted with the existentialists, and the existentialists are often associated with crises. That being said, Russell did work with Sartre on a Vietnam War tribunal. Still, on an unrelated note, the use of such language is criticized in only the greatest book of all time. So they focused on abstract ideas and developed drinking problems to blot out the self-loathing they preferred to call existential ennui. Then I realized it's not odd for a video on the analytic philosopher Bertrand Russell to be a crisis because everything is a crisis. Even Bertrand Russell, logician, philosopher, and writer, faced dismissal for his ideas from both Trinity College, Cambridge, and City College, New York. He was cancelled by academia. Russell is a complicated man, but his most interesting works are his higher-order truths about a game that nobody plays that is based on a game everybody is forced to play, also called philosophy and life. As Burton Drevin used to say to the graduate students at Harvard, philosophy is garbage, but the history of garbage is scholarship. This is a pleasant idea for people who are concerned with the general importance of what they are doing. Russell took philosophy very seriously, and as a distinguishing factor between humans and other animals. In a letter he wrote, it appeared to me that the dignity of which human existence is capable is not obtainable by devotion to the mechanism of life, and that unless the contemplation of eternal things is preserved, mankind will be no better than well-fed pigs. But I do not believe that such contemplation, on the whole, lends to happiness. It gives moments of delight, but these are outweighed by years of effort and depression. So, Russell is often grouped with other analytic philosophers, Gottlob Free, G.E. Moore, and Ludwig Wittgenstein. Still, he is an individual with individual ideas. This is not Phil Cirqueballs, but that should be a thing. And the analytic philosophers cannot be singly represented by something like this, though I wish they could. Also, where's the Pokemon Paul Campbell RPG? And do we really want to put fascism on the same level as the anarchists? Trust me, it's what Bert would have wanted. We know what Bert would have wanted because he wrote an autobiography, or several. There are three quotes from his autobiography that stand out to me. I've imagined myself a liberal, a socialist, or a pacifist, but I've never been any of these things in a profound sense. Always the skeptical intellect when I have most wished it silent has whispered doubts to me, has cut me off from the facile enthusiasms of others, and has transported me into a desolate solitude. I should comment on this, but I only included it because it's relatable. It's intellectually appealing because it rejects the general and simple. It also establishes his skeptical stance and his advocacy for epistemology. Russell also wrote, Three passions simple but overwhelmingly strong have governed my life. The longing for love, a search for knowledge, and unbearable pity for the suffering of mankind. These passions like great winds have blown me hither and thither in a wayward course over a great ocean of anguish, reaching the very verge of despair. This feels like a very Huxley or human thing to say. I must really like it because it places power in sentiment. Maybe Russell is a hopeless romantic. In the context of Russell's attempts to associate political ideologies, these quotes paint Russell as an advocate for resolving social conflicts while recognizing the complexity of participants' viewpoints. Really, though, Russell appeals to me sentimentally. At another point, he recounts there was a footpath laying across fields to New Southgate, and I used to go there alone to watch the sunset and contemplate suicide. I did not, however, commit suicide because I wished to know more of mathematics. Math was something Russell was passionate about. In an essay, Russell discusses mathematical beauty. Mathematics, rightly viewed, possesses not only truth, but supreme beauty, a beauty cold and austere like that of a sculpture without appeal to any part of our weaker nature, the sense of being more than man. Most of his work was at an intersection with mathematics. One of his most well-known works, Principia Mathematica, which is three volumes on the logical foundations of mathematics. The labor of his work is commonly demonstrated by the position of 1 plus 1 equals 2, which is several hundred pages into the first volume, and is later completed in the second volume, with remarks that it's occasionally useful and will be used a few times elsewhere in the work. He wrote many books in the philosophy of knowledge, and he's known for different distinctions he made, but all this is kind of technical and abstract, all very ivory tower, even if he was involved in politics and ethics. There's a soundbite from Russell's Nobel laureate speech I can appreciate out of context. If you wish to know what men will do, you must know not only or principally their material circumstances, but rather the whole system of their desires with their relative strengths. Not to conflate anything with all Hume. So, while I enjoy his sentiments, why is everything a crisis?